2 Samuel 6. Mm -hmm. So David was dancing, crumping, mm -hmm. because they had got the Ark of the Covenant back. Yes, 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 yes. And yes. you know, the Ark of the Covenant was basically God himself. Like, that was his representation his of presence. himself, his presence yeah. during that time. So that's why David was dancing, mm -hmm. which makes Michael, or however you say her name, reaction to him even more like bitter to be honest in my opinion exactly because like here i am here david is just crunking crumping you know right doing it right because he like we got the presence like the presence of god is here y'all it's back like we was lost but here she go yeah you're frolicking yeah i think the people the people were i mean to here's the thing this is this is this is my argument mm -hmm. of why David is probably the real originator of, of Crump. Because I'm quite sure that's exactly what he was doing. Right. Because first of all, what type of dancing could one possibly do where you are exposing yourself? Right. Right. Uh, so he had to be. And, and the word tells us that he was dancing hard. It literally says David was dancing with all of his, his might. might. Okay. Okay. He was excited that the presence of the Lord was there. Exactly. The presence of the Lord. And the reason is that here. I know that he was crumping is because we gotta look at the we gotta look at the facts here. David was a music a, mu a musician. Right. He was a musician. Yeah. Musician. Musician. That was a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> It was. He was a musician mm. and he played instruments. Uh, so like uh, he played instruments and he wrote songs. So we know that he is musically talented. Right. right? So I think of him, he was likely probably like a, a Chris Brown back in the day. Right. Right. Or should I say Chris Brown is like a David of today. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Get it correct. Let me tell you something. And so I keep envisioning, okay, how can, how hard can one be dancing where you're exposing yourself and mind you he was dancing with all of his might but keep in mind too he was getting the crowd crump right they was getting the, excited. the crowd was getting hype right and which which oh, incited her jealousy what because popped in my the head people, what popped in my head actually was stomp the yard when they were having <laughs> those battles and everybody behind him like <gasps> exactly right like just straight I'm, I'm telling you i'm just picturing it and man, David just let himself go in that praise. He gave mad, God that baby. praise with all his it might. It her soul. Yeah, it I, you know what? Y'all, y'all gonna have to read that because I'm not gonna spoil it for y'all. But the, but he read her. He read her. He read her right when she came after Woman. him. Yeah, he read her. He read her. <laughs> but again, I I think I got a good argument that David is the originator yeah, of, of Crump. Crump. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, he was Crump back then. Yeah. So yeah. Welcome to another episode of Brave, brave conversations. conversations. Let me tell you something. It's brave. The conversations are brave because I feel like it's conversations that um, people, a lot of people are having, but a lot of people are not really making personal. So it is our goal to make these conversations that need to be had a little bit more personal because I know y'all going through it. Right. I know y'all experienced it or you're in the midst of experiencing it or you're probably going to experience it. Mm. So we got to start talking about it because there is something that I probably stumbled over and went through hell and hot water, as they say, that could potentially help you from experiencing that hot water if you're heading in that direction. Period. Message. Mm. OK. <laughs> All right. So let's All get right. into it. Yeah. Um. This is episode two of like this, what is developing into this financial series. God is like leading us. Um, he's leading us in a way to where we really needed to dive deeper and dissect uh, the topic of personal finance. Mm -hmm. So our last episode, we kind of went into, it was almost like a foundational Foundation. mm -hmm. episode where we talked about uh, certain events and things that kind of sparked our attention to first even start paying attention to our personal finances. Mm -hmm. And so for me, and for us, essentially, me being the head of household, it was this big event where, you know, summer, uh, July of 20, 
22 was that big flood that kind of hit multiple states. Um, um, and then in our region, it hit certain uh, counties, but our county was not one where it hit. But just so happened within the small block that I live in, um, it flooded. And in fact, the whole community, or I would say our state initially did not know that my particular neighborhood dot, neighborhood yeah. was affected by this by this flood initially so fast forward obviously i uh, we lost personal belongings uh, you know uh, clothes uh, w- things and things that were that were down in our basement but the biggest thing is that uh my car flooded mm-hmm. uh, the family's transportation um flooded and um that kind of started this series of events yeah that opened up my eyes and i think for me um that brings us to today's episode where we really want to talk about awareness and we want to talk about taking the first steps the initial steps that Mm -hmm. we began to take um once we became aware yeah yeah and i go ahead so i just wanted to start off by giving like context so cars totaled we, they totaled out the car. We have no car. And now we basically are, where you are mostly basically deciding what to do next. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. No, so I was in, I mean, for me, it was not a even a decision of deciding. I knew instantly I was going to uh, get a new car, replace the car. But I think it was in the midst of that where additional hardships began to happen. And it was almost like I couldn't focus because I was getting hit back to back with one thing after another, just these battles within battles Mm -hmm. on different fronts. You know, I was battling things professionally. I was battling things personally that was coming my way, Um, you know, got and it was it was absorbing all of my attention and all of my energy. But what was really profound to me and I think that moment where the awareness part really started to kick in is that I think, you know, I'm a fighter. So it's almost like if you swing on me, I'm going to start fighting. And (laughs) no, seriously, that's how it was. And so, um, man, when I tell you, but here's the thing, y'all, God is so good. Like I was getting hit from so many different angles and straight swinging like right. everywhere, any, any like run up, run up, get done up. That's yeah. how that was what was happening. Like I was fighting, like like David was dancing with all of his might. I was fighting with all of my might. All these different I'm entities. For my life. Yeah, I'm fighting for my life. I'm a real one. No, like <laughs> I'm not so sad. <laughs> me let me come on let's let's not be too goofy but i'm telling you that was me i was like giving it my all just like swinging you running up you getting done up like that's what i was doing and y'all when i tell y'all the spirit of the lord was talking to me saying to me that the battle is not yours but i wasn't listening at first because i'm like what you mean the battle they, they ran up on me right they running up on me mm-hmm. and so um it that's what really happened because I think, like I said, the flood happened and that wasn't it was impactful. But I've been through hardships before, so I was ready to bounce back up, dust myself off very quickly, and just go ahead and keep moving, just moving on. But it, I think God wanted my attention, yeah. and stuff just kept hitting me from all angles. And I, as I'm fighting, trying to win these little, um, you know, battles that are that's coming my way. When it comes to finances, the what, what was cr- kind of crazy is that in the midst of why I'm so busy, within a short span of time, I want to say within maybe a good three to four month span time, I didn't even realize, y'all, that my debt was wiped to zero. I'm talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of debt whew, gone, just like that. And I didn't even realize that. And it was obviously with 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 losing the car, I was financing the car. And so I still owed money on the car. But once, you know, the that claim and stuff got paid out, not only was that debt gone, but it kind of put me in a restart a, a advantage, you know. Yeah. And so before I can even take a move that way, that's when in the midst of these when these battles just kept coming my way but then fast forward some months and this was the biggest thing my student loan debt got wiped away and that was a huge that was a huge one that was about 
I mean, I'm just going to say it because I know some of y'all probably got it and even got it worse, but it was about $36,000 oh, wow. in student loan debt and it got wiped away. And so it, keep in mind, like right now with, with, with the Biden administration, everybody else is like proclaiming now um, and for the last uh, year or more or so proclaiming that, you know, oh, that their loans got paid off. Glory to God. Look at us. Look at us, y'all. <laughs> and so, um, but I think what was important to note is that keep when when my student loan debt got wiped away, it was I was probably one in that first batch of people. Yeah, I was probably within that first tiny batch of people, and this was right when I I believe this was still being fought legally, and so nothing had happened. People were still doubting if it would get pushed through because, in fact, when it happened and when I when I noticed, um, I thought it was fake. I thought it wasn't real, right? Remember, I was mm-hmm. like, I, I thought I was like, something. Mm-mm. I had received a letter, and I don't know. I, it just seemed strange because I knew publicly what was still going on, right? And I know publicly it, a decision hadn't been made, and they hadn't been able to push something through. And in fact, remember when I started searching to try to see what was going on? I'm like, is this real? I couldn't even find anything on it. I couldn't find any any court proceeding. I couldn't find anything on this. And then I was like, well, let me log in to uh, my account, you know, my, my student loan account and see. And sure enough, when I logged in, it was gone. It was all gone. And I'm like, OK, this is I didn't know what yeah. to do. I was like, should I say something? Should I call somebody like what's <laughs> happening here? You, you know, I'm just like, oh, oh, actually, I remember you actually said you actually asked that. And I was like, well, maybe you shouldn't say something. And he was like, the way the IRS work, baby, you they going to get their money. Exactly. Okay, you think you, you winning. You think you winning something, but they going to come back and get your money. Exactly. <laughs> and so, um, no, I do remember that. And you was just like, well, just wait a little while, mama. Just wait a little while. And I said, yeah, I'm just going to wait a little while. And mind you, this was still at the latter end of 2022 when this happened. Mm. And so I said, yeah, I'm a... Um, I'm going to wait a little while. And that's kind of what we did. And I think February of 2023 is when you start hearing news reports and stuff. And I think I even seen that New York Times article where it said the Biden administration secretly forgave, uh, you know, a few, a chunk uh, of people, yeah, a chunk of student people's loans. student loans. And I was like, that was I, me. yeah, I was. Yeah, I was a little saucy. I was, <laughs> I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, oh, I was, I was a part of that batch. And um, so I think that was the moment. I was straight up debt free completely. And that's when I began to ponder. I think God's trying to tell me something. Mm. Sexy he God's was on the verge. Yeah. Uh, so the, do you remember? Actually, that's when we started watching that series. Yes. From um, what is it called? Oakwood? Yeah. Oakwood, Oakwood University. Breath of Life or something Breath like of that. Life. Yeah. He was on the verge of something, so that's actually funny that, yeah. Exactly. We started that in January 2023. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that probably sparked your, your curiosity, like, I think God's trying to tell yes, me something. Yes, yes. And so <laughs> I think instead of just, like, jumping off and purchasing um, a new car right away, I decided to get somewhere and get quiet. Yeah. I said, let me get quiet. Let me get in the presence of God. Let me pray about this and see what it is he's trying to tell me. And what he was trying to tell me is I was sleeping. I was sleeping. I wasn't paying attention. And so that was the first spark of, of being aware, right. Mm-hmm. Of, of me, of financially. Yeah. Cause that was such a financial thing that kind of transpired there. That's when I started to pay attention to things. And. Oh, you know, what just popped in my head was like how you said when you got that curiosity, you got somewhere and got quiet. And that's exactly what Jesus at times would do mm-hmm. when he would not, not that he didn't know, like he needed a revelation from God about what to do next. Cause he already knew what the plan was, but like he periodically got quiet, went to places where he could have like, you know, just communication with God. And it just, I just pictured you. I wish, I, or I hope I still have the picture. If I still have the picture in my phone, oh my goodness. I'm going to post, I'm going to post a picture of what our basement looks like. Oh, wow. After the flood. And mm-hmm. then our landlord had to come and basically tear down the walls. He had to, to get, get everything yeah, out. Yeah. Cause he was trying to seal up the cracks of where all the water was coming in and everything, but he didn't put the walls back up. 
Yeah. God bless his soul. Yeah. But um, <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, side note, I actually think that'll be yeah. a good idea because I feel like when I talk about it, people who were um, like in my life, like mm. not in my personal life, but outwardly. Um, and when I mention things like that, I could tell they not really understanding yeah. the impact or the the severity to, to have things shooken up for you. Yeah. Like that. I just want, I'm a, I, I think I still do have the photo, mm-hmm. but I'm going to post a picture of what the basement looked like. And this is the basement where she went down almost every morning. Yeah. And basically got quiet. Yeah. And prayed to God for clarity. <laughs> I had to, I had to go, I had to separate myself from the household and, you know, we were in like this duplex. And so for me to remain on the top floor, I just felt like I, it wasn't quiet enough mm. for me. And I had to go in the midst of that rubble to, to get with God, to, to have this, this peace and this quiet where I can begin to focus my thoughts mm. and turn them over to, to God really. Um, but yeah, that was just the, the side note. And for me, that was an eye opening moment. And one of the first things, and let me tell y'all something, I got my notes today cause that's just how important this is for me. I really wanted to just kind of share this because if it could be a blessing to someone in any way, shape or form, then, um, that's what I, I, I mean, glory to God, because I just really want to share like my thought process and what began to kind of, uh, transform things for me. So from that moment of being, um, you know, like unaware, realizing that I wasn't aware of them instantly me being a planner, I wanted to say, okay, well, let's fix it. But I realized that I couldn't, I mean, I, at the time, I feel like we didn't even know where to begin. Yeah. I, I kind of brought my, I brought Autumn and Aaron together and I'm just like, yeah, we got to, um, we got to pay attention to our finances. We shouldn't be, because I had told them that, you know, of course I was just going to go ahead and repurchase a car. And I said to y'all, I'm like, I, y'all, that's silly. I, I cannot, I should not, even though I moved that way in the past. I should not be trying to make such a large purchase without seeking direction from God first. Yeah. And that's what I realized. And so they was like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, that makes sense. And so um, we began to get quiet. And I said, you know, well, first of all, we we need to see, like, what's going on, you know, with, with our finances. At the time, I wasn't the only one necessarily earning income. Autumn would get various pieces of income from from college college and yep. things like that and Aaron you know I don't know where Aaron gets his money I don't, from yeah he would just have money but he just had he just <laughs> had money <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where and so but he would he would have this money but I was still the the breadwinner of the family and if you guys did get money it didn't go towards anything no no bills, um, with nothing. the household it was just your personal money to do mm. whatever whatever you wanted to do with it and so um I know for me, granted, I, of course I had an idea of what I pay and rent every month. And I had a rough idea of, oh, the light bill normally around this time of year runs this or that. But for the first time I realized collectively, I had no clue. I had no exact or, or definitive answer about how much like fixed income I was spending per yeah. month. And so that's where it all began. We literally gathered in the living room. I printed out a bunch of my bank statements. Um, you know, we, we got the laptops out and we began to just crunch the numbers to see, like, yeah. let us see. And that was like one of the first steps that we began um, to take. And that was very time consuming. Uh, it was exhausting. It caused arguments, too. Mm-hmm. And this is actually in... Um, in Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. Like the first video, it talks about the two type of people uh, when it comes to financial planning. Yes. It's the, it's the person that like loves it, like loves to, you know, go through each number, loves to be organized in that way. And then there's the person that's like, look, get out of my face with that mess. Mm-hmm. So, um. <laughs> so in, in case y'all didn't know, I was the person that loved, I didn't love it, but it was like, I was, I was dedicated. Yeah. Dedicated. Dedicated. I was, if y'all didn't know already, I was the person that was like, (laughs) get on somewhere. And I was definitely like that because like you said, I wasn't really contributing to the household. So for me, it was like big time. Like, why am I looking at this? Like Mm -hmm. this has, I mean, it does affect me because I'm in the household, but I'm just like, you need to know this. Exactly. (laughs) 
<laughs> she was. She was with it. And Aaron, in true shape and fashion, just was, was the, in his, his own world. Yeah. I think he, he, he's like the ride along guy. He's like, okay. Okay, let's just do it. Wh- you know, whatever you whatever you say. And so he was there <laughs> and he was present. But when I tell you, Autumn was just rejecting. Yeah, I was, baby, I was like, mm, I don't want to do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. And of course, I just as a, as a mother and as the head of household, I had to keep you. In order to get people to corroborate, you have to educate. Yeah. Usually, when people are not corroborating with what you're saying, it's usually coming from a place of ignorance, and I don't mean that harshly. No, I um, know what ignorance. You means. know, yeah, yeah. ignorance. You a guys lack of just knowledge. means a lack of knowledge, yeah. and so I realized that with that lack of corroboration, her not wanting to be engaged in this process, it was coming from a place of ignorance and I had to educate. It came from a place because I didn't, like I just said, it did, it did, it did affect me. Uh, You not knowing how much was going out of the household. It does affect Mm. my life, but I didn't see it that way in my view because I was never, because at that point, how old was I? It was 2022. Mm -hmm. I was 21. But I was I still feel like I was still in that phase where I was still like a, in my mindset I was still your like your, your child. Like I don't I don't need to <laughs> I mean I'm I'm always, I'm always going to be your child, but like I'm I was still in that phase of transitioning into adulthood and really taking over my own life. Yeah. Um and so it was from a place of just like, you know, a parent you don't want your kids in your finances cuz you don't want th- you don't want them to be burdened with that information. Yeah. Um, and so I still was in that place. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's good that you brought that up because that was intentional on my part to mm-hmm. make sure that you guys were not involved in that place. I never wanted to. Cause it's stressful. Yeah, yeah. I never wanted to get y'all engaged. Um, and I, mind you, this wasn't our first time having financial conversations, but I think like what you're trying to say is that it just never was real. It's one it's, thing for me to try never, to say, be yeah. wise with your money. Right. Hey, hey, you spending Without too much on this. Without me how bad it would be for me to continue to be what is it, irresponsible yeah. with my money. Like I just, I didn't get that point. I'm tr- that's what I'm trying to express. It's like, I didn't understand how being irresponsible with your money could affect your life that drastically. Mm-hmm. And that's where the education part came in. And I had to, I realized that, okay, even with Aaron um, to a certain extent, they're not about to blindly follow me in this way. So I have to break down not only, uh, you know, like educate, I have to break down the possible con- or the the negative consequences that would likely result if we are not diligent and mm. watchful and aware of our spending habits and what's going on. And so I think even like it was like I said, it was daunting, a daunting task. It was overwhelming because I wanted to get a real understanding. And so I think when it comes to the fixed incomes with all of my bank statements and everything, we went back an entire year. Yeah. We, I went back an entire year over my fixed, um, expenses and did an average of, of what that would be per month. And all overall for the year kind of got to look at what I had spent, uh, in total. These are actual numbers. So, you know, that's like, that's hard to do. That's exhausting. It, It was draining, but we got actual numbers. And then from those actual numbers, we were able to do an average to kind of get an understanding of what our monthly costs are, even though these, uh, you know, these things kind of fluctuate here and there. If you, if you look at it uh, in its total over a year, you can kind of get a good sense. And so that was, we had that knowledge. Yeah. And then became the part where it was time to take action take action, like create a budget and stuff around this information that we had just found out. And I think even though we were doing that, what was really like a shocking moment for all of us, all three of us was when we got to the category, like when we were trying to find out how much we were spending and everything. And when we got to our subscription category, Oh, you don't even, Oh my goodness. Like, you unawareness is dangerous. Mm-hmm. Like you do not know how much you're spending on something so small, something so small as in like Netflix, Hulu and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I realized like, whoa, yeah, that's a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, 
it was it was eye opening for us all. I think once I did the numbers, and again, keep in mind these were actual numbers. These were me going back through my bank Fixed statements. Numbers. So these were actual real numbers, real to the sense money that we had spent in the last year on subscriptions. And when I gave and I announced that total out loud, I think we all sat in silence for a minute. We did. And I was like, in my head, I was like, ain't no way. Why? (laughs) I was like, why do we have all these subscriptions? That was like my first thing. Oh, that was the next thing. We we were like, like, hold on. I was like, hold on. We can get rid of some of this stuff. That's it, that's literally what we did. <laughs> that is literally what we did. It's amazing yeah. when you do that and you something that at the time that if you would have said, let me cancel this subscription, you probably would have made an excuse as to why you need to keep it. But baby, when we got nah, those real numbers, we was like, we don't even use that. Mm-mm. Why do we? Right, even we would start that? asking each other. We was like, do you want? Do you use this? Who used that? And then Aaron would be like, well, I use this sometimes. And we'd be like, well, be how, like, how much often? do you use it? Right, <laughs> like what you use it for? <laughs> Can you live with it or can you live without it? <laughs> and then Aaron will be like, yeah, you're right. I was just watching it for this show. Exactly. <laughs> I, I can live without that. So that's really what kind of catapulted this, which started all of this was that realization. And um, to get, I can't remember. I can't remember exactly what that number was. Yearly, it was large, but when we averaged um, or we saw over like a month, it was it was like three hundred and something dollars, probably even more, like closer to the latter end of mm-hmm. three hundred. So that's what was devastating because now you were getting up to the level to where you're like, wait a minute, this like a mini car note this yeah, is yeah i was about to say that's a car note this is that's you a know bill. This is, that's a bill in itself yeah this is car insurance <laughs> this is sub you know this is roommate right. rent uh <laughs> you know all this type of stuff that we were um we were shocked about and before hold on disclaimer before any of you who may be watching right now and you're trying to judge going wow i don't never i challenge you well, you talking about you would never go ahead and do what we just did. Mm-hmm. Calculate your expenses for the year, average yeah. it out to a month, and you'll see you're probably in the same ballpark. You're I just know. like, whoa, don't be don't be lying to yourself now. Yeah. Don't no, well here's the thing. It, it's not that you're lying, it's just that you're unaware. Aware, yes. You're unaware of how much money is coming out of your pockets. Yes, we were very <laughs> unaware of that. And mm-hmm. had somebody would have come to me and and said, Hey, I spent about roughly three, four hundred dollars a month in subscriptions, I probably would have been very judgmental like mm, who, I would who never. in their right mind would do that. You looking at when you look at these prices like what is it for like for Amazon Prime with the ads, I, I gotta we gotta differentiate between the ads. I think it's like four ninety nine a oh, month I don't know. with ads. I think it's that's that's how much with if you get the one with the ads. You look at that number and you're like, oh four ninety nine a month. That's, that's nothing. nothing. Yeah. But then you got Hulu, which that I I can't really say what the price of that is because we had a student discount. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Exactly. That was like, that's like a dollar ninety nine. You said Amazon. Amazon Prime is actually much more than that. It's about 15. Well, they always they always increasing the price of these subscriptions, too. So I never know. I never know what the new price is. You're probably talking about that Peacock. Oh yeah, yeah, Peacock. That's what it Listen, is. They're four ninety nine with ads. We will sit here and and <laughs> wait and take up too much time yes. and we try to go into but all I'm, the subscriptions I was just that we had. Saying that all all of that adds up. Mm-hmm. It it all adds up, and so we were unaware that it was all adding up. Yeah, yeah. very much unaware, mm-hmm. and it was um, making ourselves aware, and then realizing the dangers of being unaware. That I think that gave us the extra step of motivation that we needed Mm. to then sit down and say, okay, now we need to create a budget. And this is, we didn't come up with this like ourselves. Like you said, it wasn't until you got, you got somewhere quiet and you sat with God and you actually started to intentionally try to listen to his voice. Cause one thing I've heard this past week is that God is always talking. Mm -hmm. He's always talking. And so it's like, it's up to us to tune into his voice, to yeah. know his voice. Jesus said in John 10, I know my sheep and my sheep knows my voice. Exactly. Right? Absolutely. Um, but I just wanted to point out that like knowing your finances, God already stated this 2000 years ago. 
to King Solomon in Proverbs. Nothing new. Nothing new <laughs> it y'all. really isn't nothing new. This is not no. I, I'm just. I, it baffles me every time there's this like new trend going around. Like the trend now is these financial gurus. And they're saying all these quotes and these profound messages. And people are thinking like, oh, oh, my goodness. Look what they discovered. Yeah. And it was literally said in the Bible, mm-hmm. in the Bible, mm-hmm. 2000 plus years ago, years ago. I know it's mm-hmm. always been there. Oh, you just reminded me like, again, <laughs> a, a side note I had saw. Um, now, I know like, you know, there's a, there's somewhat of controversy around uh, Dave Ramsey. Some people love him. Some people hate him. But what I found interesting is that I had saw a post from him the other day. And um, again, just talking about financial stuff and giving some points. And of course, I cannot keep myself out of them comments. I, I keep always telling her, go stop reading them comments. I can't help it. And so That's I go to go. the comments. And of course, there was one comment in particular that I found interesting. And it wasn't, it, you know, it wasn't rough or anything. The The man was just kind of saying, in other words, he was trying to say that he doesn't listen to, um, you know, he was saying what you were saying, basically, that, you know, we need to stop uh, listening Looking to these all of these experts. Yeah. Um, that he would much rather get his advice from the Bible. And this is where unawareness comes is, is important in all aspects is because since we have been reading our word more I can tell you guys that that most of the principles that Dave Ramsey talks about he, is biblical. It's, for, it's biblical, and he states that. Yeah, he says it all the time. He got famous and rich from mostly the Book of Proverbs, mm-hmm. and he said that. Yeah, I just read the Book of Proverbs. Yep, I read the Bible. Absolutely, and so I just <laughs> found that now the person wasn't he wasn't off. He was spot on with what he was saying. Yeah, you know, he, he should right. go to the source. To the source. He yeah. should go to the source for it. But I just found that interesting that he really thought he was proclaiming something profound. Whereas to me, if you really, um, if you got be, to know, if you the be source, about your word instead yeah. of just if saying you got a to word, know the source, you then see. you would realize yeah. that that what he's talking about is biblical, biblical. principles. But um, I wanted to bring that up is, is because in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 23 and 24, it says, be sure you know the condition of your flocks. Give careful attention to your herds for riches do not endure forever and a crown is not secure for all generations. Wow. Now, to give t- context behind that verse, um, this is, like I said, King Solomon, the wisest. And was he the richest? I don't want to put so. words into it. No, no, no. I think he was one of the richest. He became rich from his rich wisdom. Rich from yeah. his wisdom. But um, basically, he uses the terms flocks and herds. And, you know, back in ancient Israel, that was basically money. That was their currency. Yeah. Um, flocks of sheep and herds of goats. That's how they prospered and maneuvered and traded things. And so um, to give more context, the word know, because it says be sure you know the condition of your flocks. Basically, he's saying be sure that you know the condition of your money. Yeah. Be aware. Watch um, it. Be Look aware it. of like how much is going out, how much is coming in. And the word know in the original Hebrew means to have knowledge experientially experientially did i say that right who knows um to know about someone or something through op- observation or the senses yeah and i wanted to make that in connection of what i a verse that i stated or a verse that i mentioned earlier when jesus in and chapter um in john chapter 10 says that i know my sheep and my sheep know my voice Mm -hmm. they're using the same no so if god is basically saying and we know god knows us on a deeper level like he made us he formed us he knew us before we were formed in the womb yeah so he knows us that deeply so if they're using the same no basically i'm saying that king solomon aka god because you know the god the word is influenced by god is saying that just like how i know you that intimately as a person yeah as my child you should have the same intimacy with your money. Yep. Absolutely. That's good. Yeah. And I was like, oh, snap. When I realized this was like in the Bible, I was like, oh, Mm -hmm. Lord. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> and it and it seems so simple. It seemed like it, but yet before yeah. <laughs> before you had read it, mm. it, it didn't. You know, yeah. it didn't connect like that. So that's just how God is so good in that way. Yeah. And I want to just backtrack a little bit. This is not backtracking. This is really talking on when we first took the initial steps, right? Um, of first becoming aware and then being able to plan yeah. after we became aware. Um, keep in mind, again, going back, when I began to have this this conversation and this this breakdown, this is prior to both of my kids graduating. They were, they were primed Still, to graduate. Yeah. And this mm. is pre- employment like gainful employment where they have consistent income coming in because they had that before and I want to touch on what you had said when you were like you were kind of resisting and rejecting wanting to sit down and go over all these things because in your mind you were still a child and it's like oh I'm not even you know responsible to do anything any of these things why do I need to know this and again I just had to put into context it's because I personally knew that this time was coming and you all did too, mind you. It wasn't like I just sprung it on them that at some oh, yeah. point they would have to be responsible. I've been telling them that all their life. Yeah. We knew what the next step was. That yeah. We were going to get a job, but like it, we wasn't yeah. there yet. But for me, I'm a, I'm a pre planner. Yeah. I'm a, let's get prepared, yeah. you know? And so that's why <laughs> that was important. And again, just through educating, um, they became more cooperative with, Oh yeah, that is right. She has been saying this and, when we do obtain employment, we know what time that's going to be. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, maybe we do need to sit and learn these things and go over these things. Oh my goodness. What just popped in my head again? Biblical. This is all Bible. Okay. What you just said. Proverbs 27, one verse one, the Bibleologist, ladies right? and gentlemen, <laughs> Solomon says, do not boast about tomorrow for you do not know what a day brings. Mm. And so, Proverbs 27 is basically King Solomon giving like a little uh, lesson on how we don't know what's about to happen the next day. We don't. Only God has that information. Yeah. So he was basically saying that it is financially wise to watch how your money is moving. Yes. Just in case you get to a point, the times get to a point Mm -hmm. where we are in a financial scarcity. Yeah. A famine. A famine yeah. or something. And that day it was probably a famine mm-hmm. or something along those lines. Shoot, I still feel like today's time, people probably not don't use that term, but it and is it's famines. Yes, yeah, famine, yeah. basically. But you just said how you are a planner. And I feel like God knew that about you. Of course he knows that about you, right? <laughs> um, and so he was like, okay, let me give them a lesson that I gave King Solomon 2000 plus years ago yeah (laughs) of getting prepared because we don't know what is going to happen next absolutely Mm -hmm. and we didn't and i feel like when we look at that we did not know what was about to happen next we were just like oh snap each month yeah yeah it's like i didn't know what was coming down the line i just knew what we needed to start doing in that Mm -hmm. moment and that's what we began to do and one thing that i feel like i want to be very transparent about is because if you're like me, when you hear people say they need to make uh, create a budget, it really does seem like that's something that's very simple. But when we actually started putting that to action, it was very difficult. It was. It was very difficult because I feel like we tried so many different methods in the beginning that just wasn't gelling. It wasn't working. And I think the biggest challenge with setting a budget is it exhausts you. It drains the life it really does it feels like you just did a whole day of hard labor like working in the field yeah (laughs) it was and I guess it's a lot of reasons as to why it was draining for me it's draining because it's hard to see what you're bringing in and then a large chunk of that is instantly gone leaving you with just a little bit left to create a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> you know? What was hard for me is that, you know, at this time I still, we weren't making consistent income. Mm-hmm. So like I would try to make a budget, but since I wasn't making consistent income, it just wasn't the, the, the program that I was trying to follow wasn't working. Yeah. Like, um, just to be transparent. I think the first time I tried to create a budget was with Dave Ramsey's, um, every, every dollar. dollar. Yeah. And so, it just wasn't working because they based that off of consistent 
stream of income. They yeah. like make you list out your paychecks. Correct. I'm like, I'm not getting paychecks. I just have this lump sum of money. Mm-hmm. And then so, it was like you 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 were to plan. I have to agree. Mm-hmm. I think and and that's the thing you have to do. Like you're not gonna figure it out overnight because. Yeah. There are so many elements of every dollar that I like. In fact, I still use that app now, but I I use an additional app because that app doesn't provide how my mind works. Somebody else may swear by every every dollar and it works so well for them. But for me, keep in mind, this is personal finance, y'all. And so for me personally, I just didn't like how um, you would think that it was great that it can connect to your, your bank, account, your bank account, and yeah. it will then pull in your actual purchases. But that, for some reason, was overwhelming to me. Yeah, because it was sometimes um, pull in your transactions, and they would place it into these categories. But the category didn't really fit. It's not right in your opinion. Yeah, your own personal opinion, like the right category. Yeah, I like, don't like that. Yeah, like it will, it would say it would see that you made a transaction at Walgreens. Mm-hmm. And it would make that transaction and put it in the health category because Walgreens is a mostly like, you know, that's where you go to get your medications. You go to get, you know, um, cough syrup, all that yeah. stuff. That's usually where people go. Yeah. But you went there to get a bag of chips. Correct. <laughs> well, and it will, it will, so. you you can pull it out and put it where you think it should go. Um, but I think that's what overwhelmed me is that I had it, the way that it was coming in almost forced me to have too many different categories. Yeah. And again, at the time, as I'm learning to budget more and I'm learning what works for me, now I realize I, I can't have all these million categories. Categories. Just give me the, a few categories. And so that works for me. But what's interesting is like even with you and Aaron, you all tend to want a few more categories, but I've narrowed my categories down. I ain't really got that many. Yeah, I'm pretty specific with my categories when it comes to my budget because for me, like you, and correct me if I'm wrong, you have just like a personal shopping category. And that's like junk food. That's going to be if I want to go out to a restaurant. Right, all that. Or pick up something. For me, I diversify basically. Like I don't put fast food and junk food in the same category. (laughs) Like fast food for me is anytime I order DoorDash. Or if I'm getting fast food, like McDonald's or something. Mm-hmm. And then junk food is if I go to uh, um, um, a gas station or a Family Dollars and I buy chips or something like that. That's junk food for me. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. I'm telling you. And each time that we do this, um, when we begin to, to do this, we set a schedule for ourselves in the beginning. So, uh, you know, just to recap, first, you want to make sure that you become aware. And so if you are unaware... And if you're questioning whether or not, if you feel like, because I just want to really tap into some things. It's not that I was completely unaware. I felt like I was very aware. If Again, I can give you ballparks um, of what I was spending, and I wouldn't be too far away from it. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you are the head of household and you have, you're responsible for it all, unless you are really diligently keeping track, this is where the unawareness can become Uh, a a really big problem for you is like I mentioned with the subscriptions, right? It was just impossible for me to personally calculate, even though I was keeping these things roughly in my head for me to really calculate and see exactly what's going on. And so again, the first step is awareness. Like you, you must become aware. And if you're sitting here and if I ask you, exactly on average how much you're spending on on a b c d and if you really cannot tell me then i'm gonna tell you you're unaware no matter how much you think that you may yeah. have a grasp uh an understanding of about what right. you're spending what's coming in and what's going out that's where we were at like we thought we had awareness where you thought you had awareness where you're saying like if somebody were to come up to you and say how much do you spend on your gas you'll just give like a ballpark average because mm-hmm. you think that oh i'm aware of that but like no yeah you need to know by the sense, if you can. Correct. How no, much yeah. is going out? Because that's because <laughs> that's the problem of unawareness, right? I can give ballparks, but a lot of times we are biased to ourselves. So the ballparks may have been what you were spending consistently for the last six months, but then for this current six month or, or quarter, mm-hmm. you probably underestimated or you didn't take in consideration that there was a lot of changes and therefore you're driving an extra 50 miles a day. Yeah. 
Yeah. Which is causing you to have to put more gas in the tank than usual. I, I'm a person that needs like step-by-step instructions. And I feel like we're given that. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you want to tie it to the Bible, cause like, I feel like our instructions, our step-by-steps is biblical. It's in the Bible. Y'all It's fascinating. Okay. To me, I'm just, <laughs> I'm so hyped. You start off with Proverbs 27 verse one, where he tells you don't boast about tomorrow. You don't know what's going on. So he's like sets the foundation. Like you don't know what's about to happen. So yeah. Pay attention. Start paying attention. Mm -hmm. He then goes on in Proverbs 27 verses 23 and 24 tell you to start tracking your money. Basically, I'm, I'm giving, I'm just basically explaining yes. this. Start tracking your money. Know what's going in. Know what's going out. He then further in that same chapter goes in verses 26 and 27. The lambs, the sheep, the flock mm -hmm. will provide your clothing and the goats, the herds, the price of a field. There will be enough goat's milk for your food, for the food of your household, and maintenance of your girls. Break it down. So, basically, just to sum that all up, he's saying this is how it goes. This is, this is if you were to follow everything that he's telling you, this is how it's going to go. Yeah. Be humble and realize you don't know what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay? You're, you, you don't know what's going on. Become aware. Be financially responsible and diligent with knowing, tracking your money, this, what's coming out, what's going in. Start creating budgets, getting prepared for the, um, the unplanned. Yeah. Get, get, get start getting your mind mentally prepared for the unplanned moment. And once you do know, you will see mm -hmm. that you have enough money yes. to maintain yourself, mm -hmm. your household, and everybody within it. Period. And that's exactly <laughs> where we are right now, which we're going to talk more on that mm -hmm. um, on our next episode, because yeah. we're really going to break this down, you know, step by step with this journey, yeah. in, including even giving testimonials as to how much things have changed for us for the better. Yeah. With with doing all of this. And you can actually kind of see it within our story, because like once we realized we started, we actually saw how much money was going in and out. We realized areas where money was being wasted mm -hmm. and we were like we weren't really necessarily struggling too bad but we were like wow this chunk of money that we're spending on subscriptions for example mm -hmm. this could fix this financial problem that we've been dealing with oh yes yes for a long time because there was another <laughs> thing i feel like again complete transparency our grocery budget at the time and again it was only me. I was the only one providing all the all of the necessities and resources for the house. Our grocery budget was insane as well. Yeah. And and with along with the subscriptions, us sitting down, ooh, we almost split it in half. Like mm -hmm. we went just in that one sitting and just being shooketh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> shooketh about the amount that we were spending per month in subscriptions. Um, we cut it by half and instantly got rid of most of those subscriptions. Yeah. Um, of course they have like apps out there now that you can purchase that will identify, find all of your subscriptions, yeah. make them known to you. And then you can potentially cancel them from that, from app. that app. Yeah. But again, I'm a DIY type of person, do it yourself. And did I say that word? DIY? Yeah. Anyways. Um, DIY. DIY. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, I'm a DIY type person and uh, I just, it didn't make sense to me to purchase an, an app. additional subscription. Yeah. To cancel my other, other subscriptions. subscriptions. <laughs> it, it didn't make sense. So I was like, I was going to do it myself. So we were able to cut that in half, but that was the next one too. Initially was the groceries. Mm -hmm. I was so offended by the amount I was spending monthly in groceries for three people that remember I told you guys, I said, listen, I'm not spending this anymore. I set a budget instantly, even though I didn't know if that budget would work. I'm like, I am not spending over this amount per month. And again, I wanted to get everybody prepared because, and we talked about that. We, when I said, listen, no, not from this moment on, I am never spending this month, uh, this much in groceries monthly. We instantly started talking about different personal things that we liked to eat mm -hmm. and our pickiness of it and how that was probably um, contributing to why the grocery uh, 
budget was that high per month. And so it was just like want like wanting brand things for certain things. Certain when, name brand things. Just because. Like you know? Laurie's garlic salt. Mm-hmm. It's expensive. We don't do any other brand of garlic salt. Mm-hmm. It has to be Laurie's. Yes. And it's worth it. In my opinion. <laughs> that's a that's a sacrifice we're willing to make. Okay. It's worth but it. But one thing, I mean, we would get like where you would mostly get like fair life milk. Mm-hmm. Or stuff like also that. Also expensive. Yep. Expensive stuff. Or like your creamer, mm-hmm. which you still buy, but that's Listen, a sacrifice. I'm not that's my gonna There's change. a certain creamer yes. that you get that is pretty expensive compared to all the brand. other ones. Yeah. And a certain um, brand. For me. There's certain sauces mm-hmm. that I like. Ooh, for okay. Aaron, it was oh, the for pizzas. Aaron, yeah, the his pizza. pizzas. He only he look. He only eats. It's only two brands that that boy eat: mm-hmm. Tombstone or Jacks. Yeah. Anything else, he's like, no, this is not my piece. Oh, he eats yeah. the Giorno now too. But like, well, and I feel like you got to point out, you got to mm-hmm. take it back then because you're saying Jacks, but re- remember in that moment he wasn't. Yeah, he wasn't even eating Jacks. Oh yeah, that's actually right. He only ate Tombstone. Mm-hmm. It was tombstone, only tombstone. It used to be cheap, but it's expensive now to buy Tombstone yeah. pizzas. And so we were like Aaron. Got to catch it on sale. I was like, we was like Aaron. We sat down with him. We was like Aaron, baby. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like this. We did, you guys, and it was you it was not start an easy jacks. conversation. <laughs> it was it was not an easy conversation yeah. for us, you know, as a family to sit down and examine yeah. thyself. We had oh, to examine and ourselves. Then his noodles, too. Oh, that's not expensive. No, it's not expensive. Yeah. But we were saying how like he only eats a certain brand of noodles. Mm-hmm. And so the brand that he liked, we could only get from one store, but that store was expensive. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and then we also, like, yeah. he made me waste money at times because when I did go to another store and I got the noodles, they just they just went to waste because he wasn't, he wasn't eating them. Yeah. So we even, we even evaluated how, how often are we eating these things? Why are we buying them consistently like this when we don't, we only eat them every once in a while? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It just, and it, the improvements that we've made since that moment have been, it's been so substantial and it is opened up it is provided um, finances now that we can then shift to other important things right. or even shift into savings. Whereas before, I know for you all, y'all thought saving was completely impossible, right? With the amount of income you was bringing in. But I think what's that, what this is showing us is that it is possible. We can, we're going to talk about all of this a little bit more in further detail on episodes to come, but We hope that you all were really blessed by this particular episode where, again, I hope your takeaways are, one, you understand that you must become aware, and two, then you got to start setting the foundation for planning, which is uh, creating a budget. And that's not going to come out perfect at first. You're going to have to keep trial and error. error. Yeah. And um, uncomfortableness, like I said, is exhausting at times. It's tiring, but we set a schedule to set aside aside time for this, and we are committed to that. And so it doesn't matter what's going on in any of our lives. Uh, We don't plan outings around our scheduled time. Uh, no friends. If somebody gives us an invite to something and sorry, it's something amazing, we got a sorry, budget we're meeting. engaged with something. Sorry, we're busy. Yeah, that's what we're doing, mm-hmm. and so that's how committed we are. Mm-hmm. There have been times. I just want to leave you guys with this. There are times where it's time for us to uh, do our budget, go over our budgets, kind of uh, compare where we are, make some adjustments and things. And um, all three of us was not feeling it. And you could yeah. feel it. You could feel the energy in the room. Right. Um, I we know kind of drag me, our feet a little bit in the beginning. We be dragging our feet. Um, I remember one time, I think Aaron was just like almost sleep, like laying down on the floor the whole time, tired. But I just want to say God's grace is sufficient. sufficient. And he honors what we are doing because even in times where we don't feel like it, once we're in the midst of it, he shows up. He really does. He shows up. He energizes us. He gets us focused. And so whereas we may have entered into our financial budget meeting, um, feeling unenthusiastic, feeling unmotivated, Mm. feeling um, rebellious, not wanting to do it. Um, he honors our faithfulness, even though it's as small as a mustard seed. Yeah. (laughs) And one big lesson that I hope people take from this is that 
God's word is truth. Like literally everything we've, we've been doing is in accordance of his word. Every situation that you find yourself in, you have guidance in the Bible. Read the Bible. Agreed. Please. God said so himself to Joshua. If you follow my commandments, you will be prosperous. Yes. Sorry. Got that wrong. See, mm. even this is how you got to read your word. I wonder, I wonder if somebody going to catch that. You will be successful. No. What are you talking about? That's actually not in Joshua. Well, he told Joshua the like, same context. Oh, she about to get technical. But <laughs> he told this to David, told this to King Solomon on his deathbed. Mm -hmm. If you follow God's commandments, you will be prosperous. Yes, absolutely. I yeah. thought you meant just in general. I'm like, that is what the word says. But <laughs> he, she, did, he did tell Joshua the same thing around uh, the, the yeah. exact same thing. Follow my commandments, my statutes, and everywhere you walk. Yeah. That will be, you will have that land. But I was talking about when King David was dying and he was giving advice to King Solomon. Mm -hmm. And he was basically saying, like, as long as you just do what the Lord tell you. Yeah, you'll be prosperous in your kingdom. Look at that. Starting, <laughs> starting this episode talking about David I wonder Crumpin. how many people was go. How many people is gonna be in the comments like ah ah ah? Exactly. That's not. Hopefully a lot. <laughs> Hopefully a lot. And I listen, I'll be happy. Correct me. I was I was about to say like you being a Bibleologist like you're just such Correct a stickler me. for that. But for yes. me, I'm like it is in there. It's in there somewhere. It's somewhere. It's One in there. Chapters. That's what I was gonna say. I was like, what are you talking about? That is in there. But you like oh no, you said the me, wrong check book. Me. <laughs> Read me my rights when it comes to this. Yes. I'll be happy to hear. It. Okay. Your correction. <laughs> well, y'all, that's it. I really hope that you got something useful from this episode. I hope you come and join us next episode where we're going to go a little bit more into details uh, about further uh, personal finance. Yep. All right, now. Well, y'all know I'm going to get your host feel. If you want to um, look at more content, you can follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Brave combos for those who are just listeners it is at sign b-r-a-v-e-c-o-n-v-o-s please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be aware when we post new episodes um and we are going to be continuing this financial series let us know in the comments what you want in your personal finance journey what you want more clarification on um some questions that are popping up in your head and y'all get quiet with the lord because he is always talking absolutely all right with that being said let god do his part let, let god, god do, do his, his part. part bye now bye bye y'all <laughs>